Hey, what's up everybody, it's me Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. This time I'm drawing Natsu from Fairy Tale, and I had heaps of requests for this, so it's finally here, and I think it turned out really cool, so I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'll get on with it, try and give you guys some tips, and just let you know some of the stuff that went into this drawing, and I hope you enjoy. That's enough of my face, let's focus on the drawing, and I'll talk you through a little bit about what's going on. I'm starting out with colouring the skin, and I kind of use a technique where I'm alternating between a light Copic and I'm using the colourless blender, which I never really used to use until I kind of figured out how to use it more effectively. So it blends really well from a light colour to white, because often you'll have a light Copic and you'll kind of feather it off and it'll, it'll go pretty well towards white, but it won't be a really perfect blend to white. When you use the colourless blender, it really helps out with that and it gives it a better, smoother look. You can also use the colourless blender in lots of other situations. This is just one way you can use it. When I colour skin, I like to start with the light tones and then slowly build it up. There's a little bit of back and forth between the light colours and dark colours to help get a smooth gradation between the colours just to blend it in nice and smooth. I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video. Maybe in the future I'll do an in-depth tutorial on how I colour skin. A lot of people focus on what colour markers, like the codes that you use, but honestly that's not the important thing about colouring skin. I'm always trying out different combinations. In this video I did a completely different combination than I've normally done, and I'm always trying out different things, so don't focus so much on which colour codes that you're using for your markers. Focus more on the technique, because if you know the technique, you can use any of the colours pretty much within reason, obviously. So that's why I never really list which colour codes I use, and honestly, I don't even pay attention to the colour codes that I use. I always choose out the Copics at the start of each drawing, and I go through all my Copics and kind of select which ones I think will work best. So never feel like you have to use the exact same colours as other artists that you look up to. Work with what you've got. You shouldn't have to go out and buy the specific markers, that's why I don't really tell you guys because I would rather encourage you guys to experiment with what you've got because you can get some really cool and surprising results by doing that anyway. For example with this drawing I used reference for this and often what I'll find when I'm doing these drawings, these fan arts, I generally won't have the exact colours that I'd want to be able to replicate the picture the reference that I'm using, so it forces me to be a bit more creative and try and figure out as best I can how to utilise the colours that I have got to create a similar effect. And sometimes you get surprisingly good results, or you fail epically, I'm not gonna lie that does happen sometimes, and it happens to me quite often, but you learn from it and you move forward and hopefully it doesn't happen again. Well it will happen again but <laughs> you just have to deal with that. Well, that's encouraging, isn't it? No matter how much you practice and keep drawing, you're always occasionally gonna make mistakes. That's just part of being a human. Unless you're like me, I never do that. I mean, everything's just perfect. First time every time. Yeah, not really. <laughs> so I've nearly finished coloring the skin and I'm sorry I didn't talk more in depth about the process. Maybe in future videos I'll talk more in depth and give you guys some more kind of tips when it comes to that. But what I'm doing is adding some extra layers with my Prisma colors. You'll notice I use some unusual colors like I always do. I've got some purples and some pinks in the skin there. and I think it gives it a really nice look. I'm also adding some extra shading with a black pencil and that just helps give more contrast, more extreme shading and it gives it more of a 3D look. And that's something I really strive for in these drawings. A lot of anime art can come across looking really 2D because that's kind of what it is, but I try and add extra shading in there. Lots more shading really, to give it more of a rounded 3D look and it just makes it pop a lot more. So it depends what style you want to get. There's really cool 2D looking art that looks flat and it still looks awesome, so it just depends what you want to get. Like the saying goes, there's many different ways to skin a cat. I really don't understand that saying. Why would you want to skin a cat? I don't know. But the point is, art comes down to personal preference. If you've got a certain way you want to do things and you like the look of it, 
then who is anyone else to say that that way is wrong? Do whatever you want. Simple as that. But anyway, I'm uh, moving on to colouring his scarf. His scale scarf? Is it like a dragon scales? I don't know. In the anime, his scarf is just made out of squares, but in the reference that I used, it looked more like scales, and I thought that was a cool idea, and it looked more interesting than just drawing squares, so I kind of went with that. But apparently, not everyone agrees with me. I posted this picture the other day on Instagram, and I got a really funny comment which I wanted to share with you guys. I got to give it to you. It's awesome. But I have drew Natsu for a long time now, and this bothers me. The scarf is squares okay, not dragon scales. Also, I like how you made the shading of the drawing. Also, I don't want to brag, but I think I can color and draw like that. And I'm only G6. I'm only G6. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of your drawings then. Alright, let's get on with the video. <laughs> I was talking a little bit earlier about having to improvise when you didn't have the exact colours you'd normally want, and that's something that I'm doing here a little bit. Normally I would have liked to use warm greys for the scales, at least the base coat, but I didn't have any warm greys in sketch markers, I've got them in the original markers, but they're just harder to blend with. So what I've done, I've basically done a layer with an E marker, which is an earthy tone, and they generally have a warm feel to them. So when I've gone back and layered a neutral grey on top of that, I'm basically getting the same effect as if I had have used a warm grey. I feel this is a more advanced kind of concept when it comes to colouring. I feel really douchey saying that though, like, ooh, it's some advanced technique. Ooh, some advanced techniques. When really it's not. It's just something that builds up over time. I've done lots of drawings with Copics now, so I've just learnt things naturally from all these drawings. That's just how it happens. When you do this many drawings, you're gonna pick up some new kind of techniques and figure out new ways of doing things, which give some really cool results. So never really feel like you should be really pressured into learning all this stuff straight away if you're just starting out with Copics, because in reality, I've been drawing for years with these Copics and I started out really bad. There's lots of troubles that you're gonna to have to face when you start <laughs> using them, like so many different things go wrong. But if you stick with it, keep doing new drawings, you will learn new techniques and you will learn new things. I get asked a lot by newer artists just for some general advice for when they're starting out. And my main advice to anyone who's just starting out, or just anyone in general, is that you really just have to stick with something for a long time if you want to get good. I used to watch and look up to artists like Mark Crilly, Sophie Chan 90, <laughs> Zed Kitty Zed back in the day before she changed to Bailey J. The OG days of YouTube artists. <laughs> Things have changed a lot since then. But basically what I'm saying is that I used to look at these artists and think that I'd never really be able to get to that level. And it would be so disheartening when you try and do a drawing and you know how you want it to look in your head but it just never turns out that way on paper. And I still face this sometimes as well. The thing is, I do a lot of fan arts, so I'm working from a reference and it's a lot easier for me to make sure everything's looking right and to get an effective image. But going on into the future, I want to do some more original stuff as well because I understand a lot of people don't really appreciate the fan art stuff as much. They say it's more just copying and whatever, and I can understand that point of view. What I will say about fan art and why a lot of people do fan art, including myself, is that when you're starting out as an artist, it is so hard to get people to recognize your work and care about even looking at your artwork. It is an extremely hard challenge. And especially when you're doing original drawings it can be really hard to get people to even look at your artwork. Take for example my Instagram channel. If you check that out, the link's in the description. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see there's actually a bunch of original art. Now given some of the pictures are taken really terribly, the lighting's bad, I've used some terrible filters which have made the drawings look worse. But basically when I was doing those drawings and I'd be uploading them and stuff, I'd be happy to get 10 likes on those photos, like literally 
I'd get like five likes and stuff for a bunch of these pictures and I'd put a lot of time and effort into them and some of them are original drawings and there's some kind of cool stuff there. The photos aren't the best but there's cool stuff there regardless and it wasn't until I did my Tokyo Ghoul fan drawing I think and that's when people started to actually take notice of my art so I've kind of stuck with that a bit. Moving forward I definitely want to do more original stuff as well still do fan arts because at the end of the day I really enjoy doing fan arts even if I haven't necessarily watched the anime or read the manga I still have lots of fun doing these drawings and making these videos and it's just weird to me because sometimes I get comments very rarely I don't get much hate comments yet my channel's not big enough but occasionally people will say stuff well what's the point of drawing this character when you could just print it off the internet or something like that and it just comes down to enjoyment like I have so much fun doing these drawings it doesn't even matter to me if it's you know I'm using reference and I'm not doing an original pose or I'm not you know doing an original artwork because I just enjoy doing it and it's that simple really and I like sharing the process with you guys making these videos commentating and just having a rant with you guys it's just so much fun to me and I hope you guys enjoy these videos and I hope you guys learn something from it as well I always say I'm not a perfect artist, I'm so far from it, I'm just a regular guy who likes to draw and I've stuck with it long enough that I've got at least half decent, <laughs> hopefully anyway. So thank you so much for checking out my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, it would be much appreciated. And I'll catch you guys next week in next week's drawing video.